Welcome to Excel Level Up, where we work to improve your Excel skills. You've asked for it in the comments, so let's talk more about VLOOKUP. Today we are performing a deep look into four common mistakes that you may be making with VLOOKUP. Please hang around to the fourth one, because this may be the most important one of all. But enough talk, let's kick this off. The first mistake we're going to look at is the approximate versus exact match. The simple mistake can create false results, so it's important that you understand how this works and then how it needs to pertain to your data so you get the results that you're expecting on here. So let's jump right into an example and look at a basic fee lookup formula and break down the components. So this is going to be something that you've probably used before. If you look at VLOOKUP here, we have the different components. You first have the lookup value that defines what you want to match. Then you have to decide what table array you want to match to. Finally, you define what values in the table array to return. In this case, I want the second column or two. Now, if you stop right here, the VLOOKUP formula will work, but you're actually not completing the full range of options. By default, VLOOKUP will use the approximate match, which if you think about it from a match standpoint, do you want to approximately match the initial field or exactly match it? There are a few scenarios where you do want to do the approximate options, and we'll talk about that in a following example. I find that most use cases call for exact match. So how do you do that? You will add in a value after the number 2 which is called the range lookup. And there are two options. Either true or false. And since I said approximate is the default, true equals approximate and false equals exact. So what I find is that most of the time I enter false which produces the exact match that I'm looking for. If you're interested I have a separate video that digs deeper into range lookup. Now let's look at the second most common mistake that I see with VLOOKUP. And that is a poorly defined table array in the formula. So this is something that is a very common mistake that people make, not only with VLOOKUP, but in referencing cells in your spreadsheet. Excel users will do something like this from time to time. So let's once again look at that same formula. Here in red here is the table array which are the cells we are searching for a match. The array is J1 to L9. This may work perfectly for the first cell but if we copy this formula down to other cells, I think right away we all know the problem is going to happen J1 to L9 becomes J2 to L10 and so on. So after a few copies down it's not going to be returning the right results. So therefore what do we do? Like many solutions in Excel, there are several options which can perform the job. Let's go over three solutions that can solve this question. Solution number one is locking down the table array values. This is very simple even if you're not used to doing this. You enter a dollar sign in front of the J, 1, L, and the 9 or whatever the values. This locks down the table array to these values even when you copy the formula. It will always be J1 to L9 no matter what. An extra trick to perform this step is to hit the F4 key while the cursor is over J1, L9, and the dollar signs will be automatically added in all four spots. Let's look at two other solutions for common issues with the table array. The second solution is to only reference the columns in the table array. If columns J and L comprise the array data, do not add the row values which are 1 and 9 in this example. This is how I normally reference the array for quick V lookup formulas. If you copy the formula down, the columns J and L will remain. This creates a very clean option and you can quickly identify the data. Solution number three is custom naming that array first, and then referencing that name in the VLOOKUP formula. I do not use this solution often, but this could be the best option of the three. To add a name, you first need to highlight the cells of the table array, J1 to L9 in this continued example. Then in the name box, you will define a custom name that means something to you and hit enter. Then whenever you'll want to reference that data, such as in the array in the VLOOKUP formula, you enter the custom name. You do not have to recall J1 to L9 any longer. Like with many software development standards, naming objects is a good practice for references. The third most common mistake I see are issues related to the data itself. As data analysts we can't always control our data source but we can control how we manage that data. This is a necessary skill to learn as an Excel data analyst. I always think of data issues in one of two ways. One, you have a problem with the table array that may contain duplicates or missing data in which you need to account for in your analysis. Second is related to data format mismatches which can have a value configured as a number in the lookup for text in the array. 
Excel will not identify these two values as the same therefore limiting the usability of VLOOKUP. Let's dig into these data issues. Let's look at the table array data issues related to duplicate or missing data. For duplicates you could visually inspect the data for duplicates but that does not work well with large data sets. A better method to check for duplicates is using the built-in function within conditional formatting to identify duplicate data elements. With two or three clicks of your mouse, Excel will identify the duplicate records for you. How do you do this? Highlight the column of data for your table array. Click on the conditional formatting button on the home menu page. Select highlight cell rules. Finally select a duplicate values option. I recommend using the default options from here. Excel will identify any duplicates. At this point, you will need to decide how to manage the duplicates in terms of deleting or updating the data. As you can see identifying duplicate data is easy and is a useful tool in many other situations within Excel as well. The second data issue involves missing data in the table array. This produces the n a error that new VLOOKUP users often experience. This error used to drive me crazy because I struggled to correctly handle the error. When you see this error, the basic correction method is to add the data to the table array or remove from the lookup field. However, it may be wrong to add the table array data because perhaps that data needs to be identified as missing. So how do you handle the situation with the ugly error message? Excel offers the ability to embed the VLOOKUP formula within an IF error or IF in A formula. These two options allow you to decide what data to display when VLOOKUP does not find a match. IF in A will only work with the N A error messages so I find this to be the most precise error handling process for this situation. The second data error category I encounter involves attempting to match numbers and text, that while they appear to be a match, Excel fails to match them due to the formatting differences. What can we do about that? At a high level, the best practice is to always be consistent and format data elements the same across spreadsheets or databases, but that isn't always within your control. While this is the ideal solution, you may not find it feasible to achieve. A second option is what I just covered by utilizing error handling to display a message when the mismatch is encountered. However, in this scenario, we believe there really is a match but VLOOKUP is not identifying it as one. How do we deal with this problem? You can control how the different values are formatted within the VLOOKUP formula itself. Dynamically, you can convert a text element to a number or vice versa. Let's look at an example. In our continued example, let's assume that the A1 value is formatted as a number, but when we look at the J2L data, it is formatted as text so we may encounter mismatches. Instead of attempting to update the formatting or data itself, Let's look at how we can manage this within VLOOKUP. We accomplish this by using the text formula within VLOOKUP to change the A1 value to text. We wrap A1 inside of the text formula in this example. The comma zero at the end of the text formula eliminates adding decimal values, but that may vary based on your data. You could also wrap J to L in a text formula to ensure that both data elements are viewed as text. This solution is much better than attempting to correct hundreds if not thousands of rows of data. We're now down to the fourth and perhaps most common mistake that I see with VLOOKUP. It's being unwilling to learn new options. These options may be more powerful than VLOOKUP depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Before I continue, if you're still here at this point of the video, we would appreciate if you hit the like button and consider subscribing. The people behind this channel want to help others and your continued support prompts YouTube to suggest this video to others. The number one alternative is Microsoft Access. We believe that Access is the forgotten tool for many data analysts. I highly recommend that every analyst look to learn more about Access, perhaps not as an enterprise database but rather a tool to help you perform your tasks. VLOOKUPs are effectively drag and drop within Access. Another new great alternative is XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP was introduced in Excel a few years ago. However, if you are on an older version of Excel it may not be available for you. It gives you more precise control in data selection as well as having built-in error handling. We have another video that goes in depth about XLOOKUP which I will link in the description. Finally, if you're on an older version of Excel and do not have XLOOKUP as an option, you should look at index match. Index match is similar to XLOOKUP in functionality but slightly more complicated. I will also link to an index match video in the description. 
If you're still here I greatly appreciate you watching our work. Have a great day.